Good evening, Oswego. Thanks for stopping in. I'm Dan Frome. And I'm Victoria Diana. Tonight we begin with a story out of Auburn. A Clay resident charged with vehicular manslaughter faces jail time. And an Auburn couple was found dead in Florida last weekend. We will have more on these stories in just a minute, but first a quick check at your weather with Storm Team 10 meteorologist Mike Voto. Currently outside, it's 23 degrees on the mostly clear skies. However, we have that southwest wind at 7 miles per hour, which is making that real field temperature a brutal 12 degrees. So if you're heading out tonight, definitely make sure you have that heavy coat, even the hat and scarves and gloves, you're going to need them. Taking a look at your regional radar, we, not much to speak of besides a few lake effect snow showers in the region. These lake effect snow showers, however, will die down heading into the overnight tonight and we'll see the sky begin to clear, as well as the sun return tomorrow. As we have a high temperature tomorrow of 32 degrees, the sun will feel nice, but still it's gonna be another cold day as we barely will get above the freezing mark. So definitely make sure you have that heavy jacket with you. Wednesday we have snow showers that are gonna move into the region and behind that storm system that's gonna be moving up the coast, we're only gonna get up to a high of 24 degrees. But look at this on Thursday, 39 degrees. Is spring starting to show its face? I'll have your full weather update in just a few minutes. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Mike. An Auburn couple was found dead in Florida last weekend. The body of Grace Maynard was found floating in the Suwannee River, and her husband James was found floating 1.6 miles north of Dowling Park. The Wildlife Commission, who is investigating the deaths, found that the deceased launched a small boat from the ramp of their truck into the river, and then somewhere along the ride, something went wrong. What that something is, is still unknown. Glenwood Carr, the accused in a drunken car accident that left his cousin dead last August, was found guilty this morning for vehicular manslaughter. Carr, who was the intoxicated driver, fled the scene, leaving his cousin underneath the crash car to die. Carr spoke at court today, saying he is not the mindless, uncaring monster the media has portrayed him as. The Clay residence was <coughs> sentenced to 6 to 12 years in prison. A Buffalo woman was found guilty of stealing $90,000 from a youth hockey team in order to feed her crippling gambling addiction. 49-year-old ex-treasurer of the Deepu Youth Hockey League, Teresa Fusani, pleaded guilty to the crime and apologized for letting the families down who trusted her. Fusani has been sentenced to four months of weekend jail and 500 hours of community service. A Syracuse man was charged Monday for starving his dog. 42-year-old Sean Figueroa was found guilty for a misdemeanor for animal cruelty failure to provide proper sustenance. According to police, the pit bull Patrick <coughs> had not eaten for at least two weeks and was probably starved even longer. Patrick is currently recovering at the DeWitt Animal Hospital. The moments during a cardiac emergency can be extremely chaotic. However, there is one skill that can literally be the difference between life and death. WTOP's Megan Roberts spoke with EMTs at SAVAC about how crucial it is to know CPR. Yeah. Connect. One step could be the difference between life and death. You can save somebody's life, there's nothing like it in the world. CPR is considered one of the most important skills a person can learn. According to the American Heart Association, most people who experience cardiac arrest at home work or in a public location die because they don't receive immediate CPR from someone on the scene. Knowing CPR, at least knowing how to do compressions, is probably one of the most important things that you could know. However, 70% of Americans say they feel helpless to act during a cardiac emergency. That's why high schools and middle schools are starting to provide lessons in CPR. CPR classes are stressing the importance of using hands-only CPR, which involves starting compressions on the patient immediately. Hands-only CPR is a great tool for you know, the public to use, especially considering you don't have to make contact with um, you know, a person's mouth. Right? EMTs at SAVAC say the skills are relatively easy to learn and can literally save a person's life. The more people that know CPR, the better because that'll increase the chance of someone that knows CPR being there during an event and therefore being able to save their life. Knowledge is power. <laughs> Although the Red Cross provides occasional CPR certification throughout the year, these EMTs feel there needs to be more awareness on the importance of learning CPR. Megan Roberts, As We Go Now. Friends and relatives in Oswego County, it's time to remember your long-lost third cousin twice removed. 
A local Oswego County resident just won $1 million on a scratch-off ticket. This man received a birthday ticket from a friend and scratched it off to reveal those faded results. The man will be presented an oversized check tomorrow by New York Lottery Zone Yolanda Vega, 2.30 at KTM Mini Mart in Oswego. Liverpool residents broke six Guinness World Records this afternoon for a good cause. Gym owner Bob Natoli, his son Bobby Natoli, and his son-in-law David Bardone broke the fitness-related records to raise money for the Patterson family. 34-year-old Megan Patterson died tragically in a head-on car crash last November. Some of the records broken include most step-ups in one minute carrying a 100-pound pack and most pull-ups in one minute. Donations for the family can be made to their fundraising page on youcaring.com. St. Baldrick's will be holding a fundraiser to raise awareness and funds to fight childhood cancer. This year's fundraiser will be held at Lake Ontario Conference and Events Center on March 30th from 1 to 5 p.m. So far this year, more than 170 Oswego County men, women, and children have volunteered to have their heads shaved and raise money to support the cause. Last night, an unknown culprit slashed the tires of numerous Oswego resident and student cars. Olivia Eugenio reports from Oswego. Jeremy Wong and Dan oh, and I woke too, up today huh? thinking yeah. it would be your yeah. average yeah. normal yeah. day. Well, I woke up this morning. Um, I had a 9 o'clock class. Little did they know they would walk outside to their tires being slashed. I saw that my tire was flat and I thought that I ran over something the night before. Um, I called AAA after my class got out, uh, had them come replace the tire, and uh, they explained to me that about 15 other people have their tires slashed. He called me and said that the tow truck drivers told him about the tires being slashed. And I was just sitting on the couch relaxing and I jumped up through my coat and went sprinting outside. I was in a fury at that point. The college students called police asking if there was anything that could be done to find the person responsible. But they just said if they find out who did it, then they would let me know. But the odds of them finding out were pretty much slim to none. Even students whose tires were not slashed did not feel safe parking on the street and felt the need to park in businesses around the corner like this friendlies right behind me. I don't feel safe parking in the street right outside my house and I think that's, that's a problem. Officials recommend residents park on the street to prevent anything further from happening. In Oswego, I'm Olivia Eugenio. Coming up after the break, more news in Malaysia flight disappearance. And are we done with the snow yet? We'll find out when we come back. Stay tuned. You're watching WTOP 10 News. Morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me back. Hey, did you tell your parents about us? Let's skip first period together. Did you get all my texts? Is practice over yet? Where are you at? Are you with your friends? That's L-A-A-A-A-M-M-E-E-E. -E -E. Capital X, lowercase o, capital X, lowercase o. I love you. JK, I hate you. JK, are you ignoring me? We're in a huge fight right now. Is this something I did? I can see your lights on. I'm coming this over. Isn't a What'd joke. you dream about? Did me? I'm lonely. Holla back. Holla back. Let's try something new. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me.
Good evening Oswego, I'm Storm Team 10 meteorologist Mike Vado here and taking a look at current conditions outside, we're currently sitting at a, a bit of 23 degrees on the mostly clear skies, however we have a southwest wind at 7 miles per hour making that real field temperature of 12 degrees, so if you're heading outside tonight you're definitely going to need to bring that heavy winter jacket with you. Now taking a look at your current state temperatures, Jamestown 19 degrees and Binghamton 19 degrees at the same temperature, those are your cold spots and New York City is the warm spot at 32 degrees with 20s elsewhere across New York State. So taking a look at your regional radar, again we, the blue is snow so we have lake effect snow showers around the region however heading into the overnight tonight these will begin to die out and we'll have more of clouds breaking. Go, looking at the national radar we have this one system down here in the Gulf of Mexico and another system here in the Midwest. These two systems are going to come off the coast and they're not going to affect our region except bring to us a couple of snow showers and flurries at most. So your top weather headlines, dry and cold for the day tomorrow with snow showers heading into the overnight for Tuesday into Wednesday and late week warm up. It looks like it's going to warm up for the end of the week. So for tonight we have partly cloudy skies with a low temperature bottoming out at 18 degrees with a brisk wind out of the southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour, so definitely make sure you have that winter coat with you, a scarf and hat and all that. Heading out to work for class or for the morning commute tomorrow, you're going to start with 18 degrees, poly cloudy skies, heading to noon for, for the lunch, same thing, warming up nicely to 31 degrees, and hitting that high temperature of 32 degrees at 3 p.m., and then falling back down to 31 degrees around dinner time at 5 p.m., with those clouds increasing as well. Heading into Tuesday, looking at Tuesday night's weather map, we have this storm system down to our south. This will move off the coast, except bring us a couple of scattered snow showers and keep us relatively cold, but with clear skies. So for tomorrow, mostly sunny with a high temperature, barely getting above freezing, 32 degrees, with that wind increasing to out of the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow night, you're going to have increasing clouds with snow showers with a low temperature of 18 degrees and the wind out of the southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so again make sure you have that heavy winter jacket with you as it's going to be brutally cold out there. Looking at your late week, we have the jet stream basically right over our area, so this is going to bring warmer air into us and where it dips down here in the plains it's going to be colder air, so this is going to give us rain showers and keep the snow in Canada. So there will be no more snow in the forecast after Wednesday. Wednesday we have a High temperature of 24 degrees as that cold front moves through the region. Thursday, <coughs> pretty nice day, 39 degrees heading into Friday. We warm up, but with that warm up, we're going to have a high temperature of 46 degrees and rain showers. So more <laughs> snow, more yeah, snow. Just one more night or two, and then we'll be pretty much, I'd say, done with it. I think it'll be good much. to go. Spring's on its way. Yep. Oh I believe spring is starting to show its face. It's yep. going to be, I feel like it's going to be a while until you can break out the spring clothes. So yeah, well, it's going to slowly warm up. We have a slow moderation, but the warmer weather is mm -hmm. starting to show. So. You know, maybe if we maybe if we just like wear like shorts and t-shirts out <laughs> in the snow, yeah. I think maybe like our good energies <laughs> will make spring happen more. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're going to take a look at our state news now. The Obama deadline looms as we near March 31st. Those without health care by the state will receive a $95 penalty or 1% of their income, whichever is greater. So far, over 717,000 New Yorkers have enrolled in the state health insurance exchange through Obamacare. More than half of those enrolled apply for Medicaid. Eight people are dead and 108 missing after a massive landslide in rural Washington. Snohomish County Communications Director Sherry Ariton says that they are doing everything they can. The landslide covered about one square mile and was caused by groundwater satura saturation following heavy rain over the past month. Dave Norman, a Washington State geologist, says the landslide is one of the biggest he's ever seen. The plane still has not been found, but we now have the most definite news about Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 that has been missing since March 8th. Polo Sandoval has the latest news from Washington. Authorities say the flight ended in the waters of the South Indian Ocean with no survivors. All 239 people lost. It's been 17 days. 
They simply just give us this result. How can people bear this? The possible fate of the flight came from a definitive statement by the Malaysian Prime Minister. It is therefore with deep sadness and regret that I must inform you that according to this new data, flight MH370 ended in the southern Indian Ocean. A spokesperson for Malaysia Airlines says they met and called most family members before sending them this text message before the prime minister spoke. There was screaming, cursing and wailing, some so distraught they had to be wheeled out of the meeting on emergency beds. After 17 days of hope, the raw pain of the moment now setting in. Earlier today, Australian officials announced they have a lead. They spotted two objects in the key search area. One of them is a gray or green circular object, the other an orange rectangular object. But so far, nothing has been definitively linked to the plane, although some answers were given today. The mystery remains. When we come back, we'll hear about Kim and Kanye's latest media issues. Sounds riveting. And we'll have a full look at sports, but first, here's a look at your late night menu. Hey guys, this is my teenage friend Fred. Rad! <laughs> hey pal, you want to pay attention to the road? Relax man, I got it. Look my man, if your bad driving gets me killed, you better hope you die too or I will haunt you silly. And I'm not just going to float over your bed like woo. I'm going to be making a more annoying noise like ah! And instead of wearing those long white robes, I think I'll wear something more form-fitting and upsetting. The other ghost will look and be like, wow, we've never seen that before. Hi, I'm CNN's Rob Marciano, and you're watching WTOP 10, your television station. everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. and Kanye West take heat over a magazine cover and Alyssa Milano is having another baby. For these stories and more, here's Christina Mutchler with your Hollywood Minute. A cover of Vogue, but not without some Hollywood backlash. Many celebrities tweeted their disapproval. Sarah Michelle Gellar said, well, I guess I'm canceling my Vogue subscription. Who is with me? Seth Rogen and James Franco used the opportunity to come up with their own rendition of the cover. They posted this photoshopped version showing their heads on Kim and Kanye's bodies. Last fall, Rogen and Franco made headlines when they spoofed Kim and Kanye's Bound 2 music video. Alyssa Milano told Us Weekly over the weekend she's pregnant. This will be child number two for the former Who's the Boss star and her husband. The couple currently have a two-year-old son named Milo. At the movies this weekend, sci-fi action flick Divergent was the big winner. It came in at number one with $56 million. The number two spot was held by the family comedy Muppets Most Wanted. And coming in at number three is Mr. Peabody and Sherman. For Hollywood Minute, I'm Christina Mutchler. All right, now we're going to take a look at sports with Tanner Stewart.
It's Monday, and you know what that means. We have your Athletes of the Week. Honors go out to Eric Hamilton and Esther Gabriel. Hamilton of the men's baseball team had a huge weekend in Florida. The freshman batted 300 throughout the week-long 10-game series and also scored six runs. Gabriel of the women's lacrosse team had quite the weekend in Florida herself. Her shining moment came in a game against St. John's Long Island where she scored four goals to lead the Lakers to a 15-10 victory. Congratulations to both of these athletes on their amazing performances and good luck this season. The Oswego State men's baseball team ended their Florida trip on a positive note, taking down UMass Dartmouth in a thrilling 14-9 victory. The two teams were knotted at nine after eight innings, and then the Lakers found a much-needed offensive surge and plated five runs in the final inning to secure the victory. Josh Martin uh, locked up the game with the win for the Lakers, pitching the final two innings and striking out four. Oswego moves to nine and four after the crazy win. They will travel to Utica on Wednesday to take on the Pioneers at three o'clock. Regular season baseball is finally underway, folks. The Dodgers and the Diamondbacks travel to Australia for some baseball down under. Here's the Yasriel Puig standing in. He would rip a double down the left field line, scoring the young Dodgers speedster, D. Gordon. Puig would then later leave the game with an apparent back injury. His status for the Dodgers is now day-to-day. -day. We'll see what happens with Puig later in the week. Now we flash it to the bottom of the ninth inning where Kenley Jansen serves up a Trump bomb to Mike Trumbo. Welcome to Arizona, Mike Trumbo, new, new acquisition for the Diamondbacks. That cuts the Dodgers lead to 7-5. to five. Dodgers trying to mount a comeback, but Kenley Jansen would have no part of it, fanning Gerardo Parra with this 95-mile-an-hour fastball, securing the 2-0 sweep for the Dodgers and the 7-5 victory. Busted brackets, frustration, money lost. All these terms can only apply to one thing. March Madness. The NCAA men's college basketball tournament got underway starting on Thursday and carrying us through the weekend. And what a crazy weekend it was. In just the first round, we saw 3-seed Duke get upset by 14-seed Mercer. And then in the second round, we saw the 11-seed Dayton Flyers take down Syracuse to move on to the Sweet 16. These losses, among many others, sent paper shredders all over the country into action as fans, including myself, shredded their brackets. All of these upsets made Warren Buffett a very happy man as he offered $1 billion to anyone who could make a perfect bracket. Folks, there is now zero perfect brackets and $1 billion more dollars in Warren Buffett's pockets. Thanks, Tanner. That's it for sports. When we come back, we will find out how people celebrated National Puppy Day. <laughs> and a new blockbuster movie is filmed close to home. Stay with us. Everyone has friends. There's online friends. Friends to go out with on a Saturday night. Friends to hang out with and do nothing. Friends who show up on moving day. And then there are the friends who'll be there if someone is dealing with a mental illness. Are you one of those friends? Teaching a kid football is one thing. Keeping a kid in school, that's the name of my game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it.
It's animals running amok in today's Take a Look at This. From a camera chomping crocodile to a runaway panda, we've got the video you've just got to see. Here's Sunlin Surfati. Crocodile trying to take a bite out of a camera. Chris Madden is a volunteer at a South Florida wildlife preserve and was trying out his new GoPro camera. I was just trying to get some underwater shots of him and as soon as the camera touched the water near him, he went berserk, as you can see. The 13 and a half foot croc named Big Boy bit right through the special PVC housing Chris made and into the camera. And take a look at these elephants who escaped a circus in St. Charles, Missouri. We saw the other people running and we were like, oh my God, they're escaping. Like, what's going on? The three elephants roamed the arena parking lot, damaging several cars, but not injuring anyone. Handlers got them under control about 45 minutes later. This wild giant panda was rescued after wandering into a town in northwest China. Villagers and tourists gathered to watch the panda walk along a river there until he saw the onlookers and tried to hide. Animal officials tranquilized the panda, then used a net to catch him. For Take a Look at This, I'm Sunlin Serfati. And in other animal-related news, man's best friend has a day that's all his or her own. Yesterday marked National Puppy Day. Organizers hope to encourage people to celebrate the unconditional love that puppies bring. They also want to bring awareness to puppy mills and animal abuse. Religious or not, the star-studded blockbuster depicting the epic tale of Noah will be rocking box offices this weekend, and the set of this biblical journey is closer to home than you think. Long Islanders can feel a bit of hometown pride when they hear that the set of Noah Noah, including his fabled ark, was built and filmed in Long Island's own Oyster Bay. The ship and set were, was so difficult to see by the public as they filmed the shots deep within Oyster Bay woods for atmospheric effect. Great news for John Green fans. The popular young adult author is in the works for another movie deal with Fox 2000. The movie <laughs> adaptation of Green's novel, The Fall in Our Stars, is set to come out this summer. His 2008 book, Paper Towns, is the next to be adapted by Fox 2000. The movie will bring back the producers, screenwriters, and actor Nat Wolf from The Fault in Our Stars. And before we say goodnight, here's one final look at your forecast with meteorologist Mike. Yeah, so taking a look at your class cast outside, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. For walking to class, it's going to be a brutally cold 18 degrees. And heading later into around the noon hour, we're going to get up to 30 degrees, hitting a high temperature at 3 of 32 degrees, and then falling back down at, into the evening, 29 degrees. All right. <laughs> All right, it's really sad when I'm getting excited that it might get into the 40s, and <laughs> it's going to feel like probably the 70s. Absolutely. I've actually got a weird question about the news. What is weekend jail? Is that a thing? What like is, one, one, of the, one of the women got sent to weekend jail. That was her sentence. What? Do you, like, do you go to <laughs> jail on the weekend and the rest of the week you're just free to go? <laughs> Stop in for weekend visits at the jail? <laughs> sounds like a good, that sounds like a good old time. I think I'd do that. <laughs> Read poetry to all the inmates and stuff. Oh, God, that's awful. <laughs> what do you guys think about <laughs> Kim Kardashian and Kanye being in the news? <laughs> like, with the whole Vogue thing. Mm. Do you guys, like, mm. I just, mm. I'm so over the whole Kardashian thing. But you know it's what? awful. <laughs> Kim, Kim and Kanye, I don't know, but you know what is interesting? Those, those sports, March Madness, how's oh, that going? Oh boy, how's that going for me or for the yeah. American? Yeah. For me, how's well, your bracket going? You know, it's, it's seen better days, yeah. Dan. It's definitely seen better days. I think I speak for a lot of sports fans when I say this, but March Madness is officially uh, over in the money department oh, for me. You didn't, play, you didn't have any money on, on it, did you? No, no money on it, thankfully, but That's uh, good. yeah. Good, good move by me there, though. Yeah, no absolutely. <laughs> so wait, who did you have going all the way? Did you have Syracuse? Well, no, I didn't have Syracuse going far. I don't really have a lot of faith in them. Sorry, uh, Central New York fans, but uh, <laughs> sorry there. But I actually have Louisville going all the way, so uh, they're still in it. I hope they can make it all the way. Maybe win me some money. Who knows? Nice. Yeah. We'll and see. Mike, did you have one? No, I didn't make a bracket this year just because I <laughs> helped. All right, well, that's it for tonight.